Hi, today we are going to talk about social power, uh, the dominant power in a work organization, and the alpha dog concept. So, um, so among the social powers, the first one is the legitimate power, where a person feels like they have the overall power, and they have a great deal of power, so they feel like they have a right to be requested. In other words, uh, even when they delegate, they always want a person to keep coming to them because they feel like they are legit. They are the ones that should hold the power. So these kinds of people are usually threatened by those who are experts within the organization because they might mistake their sharing of talent um in some kind like a person is taking over so sometimes they might be unstable when they feel like they're undermined and they think of others as being submissive so the interesting thing here is that a person's power is restricted to the circumstances in which others think one has legitimate power so if other people think that uh Maybe this person can't help me, then they won't come to this person. So um, in the book, Caslo uh, gave a very good example of Disney World in which uh, the cleaners and people who help around, say the lower rank um, employees were the ones who were helping customers most and people would come and ask them because first of all, they are available they know the place because that's that's where they clean or that's where they work. So people rarely ask for managers. They look to these people as a solution because they hold the power within the place at that time and they are able to solve the need. Uh, next we have the coercive power and um, just as its name it takes a lot and it involves punishments um, because a leader who uses coercive power will want to control the ideas and whenever they feel like somebody else is trying to take over they'll feel intimidated they'll also control the interpretation um, of whatever is going on they'll control the public information within the organization like for example if a person gives a bad review and they might not communicate with the company if the company is in trouble they might not tell the followers what's going on as in they leave them behind the curtains because they want to be the ones to control the power so we there might also be cultural coercion because uh, they might not be intercultural leaders as they want um, whatever ideas they have to be imparted in the people so they control the social mode in that people might fear them and they might not associate with them and might just be working without considering the work environment as a family or as a team so they might take a greater extent and control the physical life for example, a person might miss days, maybe due to their kid having a bad day, or maybe um, if um, they completed their sick leave hours and maybe they fell sick again, uh, this coercive leader might force them to work over time to cover um, whatever time they missed. Then we have the reward power. Um, so leaders who practice the reward power usually give constant praise to people. Even when there is a negative issue to be discussed, they start with a praise part of it so that people feel empowered. They feel appreciated and noticed. And then they usually say thank you. So that's like a key word in their leadership. And this thank you lets people know that they are appreciated. They are noticed within a group. And they also can control power by giving promotions whereby the promoted person feels like this extrinsic reward is tying them to the leader so these might be able to manipulate people in a kind of smooth way 
Uh, they also give out desired trainings like uh, professional development seminars. They might um, uh, fund their employees' education and the like. Uh, then we have the experts, um, leaders who um, use the expert power tend to share knowledge with others and they tend to be well informed. They try to inform themselves so that whichever situation they are able to solve it. So um, some of these experts are noticed within and people look to them for leadership. Um, like for example, um, if you're in a place and maybe you go to the bank and um, there is an error they might not call the manager if there is a person who has been there long enough and has faced the same issue or trained this employee they'll say okay i'll go to so and so she or he will be able to solve it because experts are always willing and minutes their busy schedule they are always willing to help then we have the referent power which comes because of influence so um a person's liking and respecting another and um, comes because they identify with them they feel like uh, they have the power because of what they do or who they are and or what they've become so there is that influence that flows out of rationality expertise or moral appeal like for example the celebrities or people who um, own or people who are said to um, have a high net worth and when they speak people might just listen or people who are over educated uh, like they might have so many PhDs in a certain area, they might have written so many articles, or even just their um, their history. So people might look at them as referent leaders who are using referent power, even when they are not, but because that's what people identify them with. Um, so analysis of the dominant type of social work in the setting I work with so many experts who have lived there in a long time and um, whenever something goes wrong they just say here I am I'm ready to help what do you need so they're always willing to share information and they lift others up they can't see you struggling and just be comfortable they always come to the aid because they want to share their expertise and they're always quick okay uh, so next we have the alpha dog concept um, that can generate economic value while also having the best possible effect on an individual who works so with the alpha dogs uh, their communication is comprised of conviction and passion and that's where they create the energy and uh, they are identified because of their position and credibility and all the followers within uh, know who they are and what they do so um, a person cannot think of themselves as an alpha dog when the follower has not identified them as alpha dogs. We have advantages like high value results, motivates other people, builds self-efficacy, but they can also be bad listeners. They may strike fear in the process of imposing what they want on the people. And these are some of the sources.